Greetings Laddingtons, today I thought to answer a question I got on my Patreon for the Q&A thread and uh, it's an important enough question from uh, Rasmus from Denmark to make a separate video on it because it's a question I've gotten so many times, it's a question I have asked myself so many times and I've meditated a fair bit on it. So basically the question is how can we save Europe if Europe is lost what do we do? Um, similar questions as this and when we mean Europe, when people say Europe they usually focus on Western Europe, so Great Britain, France, Germany, Sweden etc. But you know we have the entire Eastern Europe as well and I'm not going to say that everything is so good in Eastern Europe, that they are so based and everything is so bad in the West. I'd say in Sweden it's still better to live here than in many places in Eastern Europe because they have a lot of problems unless you're a woman of course if you're a woman I probably would say that uh, many Eastern European countries are better than Sweden in certain situations but you know Eastern Europe they have plenty of problems of their own it's not been that long since the Soviet Union collapsed and basically all Eastern European countries they were in quite a mess when the Soviet Union fell, uh, when the Iron Curtain was lifted. But if we look at where things are headed, many Eastern European countries, especially the Visegrad countries, we can take Poland for example, they have made tremendous leaps in the right direction. Whereas Sweden, for example, is going in the completely opposite direction. So if I say now, yeah, Sweden is perhaps better to live in, or Great Britain is better to live in than some Eastern European countries. If you ask me again in five years, I don't know if I will say the same thing. If you ask me in ten years, um, I will probably say that most Eastern European countries are better, um, especially in terms of you know safety for women, etc. Um, that being said, I don't think. Western Europe, I don't think Sweden is lost at all. This is just getting started and we shouldn't be so quick to just focus on the bad news. But in the worst case scenario, if nothing changes in Western Europe, what can we do to save some parts of Europe? And you know, when I think about these things in a very grandiose scale, I um, envision Western Europe as the Western Roman Empire and Eastern Europe then as the Eastern Roman Empire and as you all know the Byzantine Empire, the Eastern Roman Empire, they um, survived for much longer. Now what I hope at least is that Eastern Europe will continue to develop, will continue to get economically stronger, hopefully with the help of the EU. Ironically enough it might just be the EU that saves us. Who knows, I might be overly white pill on this but um, if Eastern Europe can continue to modernize in the good sense you know get rid of corruption get rid of a lot of the bad things continue to build themselves up to be strong and at the same time and this is my wish for all Eastern European guys I know I have you know a lot of subscribers from Poland and Romania some from Hungary as well Czech Republic Please do emulate countries such as Sweden in certain regards, but also tell as many people as you know, every time you talk about Western Europe, tell them the truth about mass immigration from the third world. And, you know, keep firm, stay strong in this regard. You can just point to Western Europe. You can just point to Sweden or France and say this is what we must not do. So you can say we will continue to implement a lot of the good things you can see in Sweden, but we will also avoid the mistakes Sweden has made. So on a personal note, what do I do? I have my two heroic and glorious companies, Legio Gloria for clothing and training gear and Jotunheim Nutrition for supplements and I'm proud to say that I make business transactions with the following countries Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania 
Poland, Hungary, Czech Republic, and of course internally in Sweden as well. So in my view, I want to drive as much business to Eastern Europe as possible at the expense of China. You know, all of my clothes, all of our clothes, etc. are made in Europe, in uh, these different countries, primarily in Poland. Also on a personal note, if something happens here in Sweden, I know I can send my family to Eastern Europe and continue the good fight here. Now I don't think anything of the sort will happen. Um, I think that's wishful thinking for some guys who just don't want to engage in a marathon. They want to have a quick decisive battle, but you know I don't think it will come to that. Um, so we need to adapt ourselves to reality and not you know fantasize about some heroic crusade or anything might come later in a few decades who knows but as for now dispel any thoughts of violence because if you do violent acts the establishment will jump with joy because then they can implement more restrictive measures against any pro-european groups or individuals so basically my own vision and i put my theory into practice by my, you know, my business endeavors. You know, stimulate Eastern Europe, bring as much strength and wealth to Eastern Europe as possible, have them develop as rapidly and as good as possible. Um, then we have both a base for, you know, uh, a strong support to retake Western Europe if it should come to that. And also if we're talking geopolitically, I'd rather have a strong Eastern Europe so we can have a strong Europe as a whole. Because you know what, at this stage in time we can't have this sort of petty nationalism that each country in Europe is hating its neighbor because of a conflict 200 years ago. Now I understand that there is a lot of bad blood between, you know, uh, a lot of Hungarian guys I know, they don't really like their neighbors, I understand, but at the same time, you know, Hungary today, on its own, is weak. Just as Sweden, on its own, is weak. That's why I hesitate to call myself a nationalist. Now, I might as well call myself uh, an imperialist, and I say this, and I'm 100% on the side of, you know, my Swedish brothers. Um, but I also realize, the time when Sweden could be strong on her own, long past. The time when Germany could be strong on their own, long past. Same thing with basically all European countries. And I'm not saying that all Europeans are the same. I'm not saying that we should be one country, but I say we could be a union, because there is more that connects us. We have more in common than uh, we do not. So, you know, I don't want to be a fanboy of the EU because the EU is very corrupt and very keen on replacing Europe's native population but I do want some sort of union at least I want some sort of cooperation because let's not be let's not be libertarians in the sense that we believe oh if I leave others alone they will leave me alone I will live here peacefully ever after there will always be threats there will always be powers that seek to invade Europe, as has always been the case. So therefore we must be united. You know what, a single European country can't stand against these forces, but united there might be a chance. So basically my vision for Europe, for the future, what can be done, is we hold our heads up high in Western Europe, we do try to enlighten and convert as many people as possible to understand what's going on. Then we also have to say, you know what, it's far from over, it's just begun. Europe is not lost, and especially since we have large parts of Eastern Europe who are in a good position, and that position is getting better. And we also have to understand that a strong Eastern Europe will mean a strong Europe as a whole. So for me, again, personally, and in my business dealings, I want to direct as much business as possible to Eastern Europe. 
make them strong instead of making China strong. So think about that when you purchase something as well. Look where it's made. Look whose economy you're supporting. Look who you're making strong. Do you want to make Eastern Europe strong? Do you want to make Lithuania strong? Do you want to make Poland strong? Or do you want to make Bangladesh and China strong? It's up to you how you purchase, what uh, sort of clothes and uh, products you buy. Anyway, this is not a video where I talk about how good my business ethics are, but I'm just saying that I do try to live in accord with my vision for the future. Uh, so I'm not just going around here talking about how bad things are. I'm just also trying to steer at least my little part in a better direction for the future. So to conclude, making Eastern Europe as strong as possible. And also I wish I could reach out to more Eastern European guys and say, you know what, you need to be prepared because the EU, as it is right now, they will continue to try to bully you into accepting migrants. And I just have to say, stay strong. Do not accept the bullying. They uh, can't really do much. You know, they say money is power, but power is power. If you, and I talked to you know, the Visegrad countries here, Hungary, Poland, etc. If you say no, there isn't much EU can do. Sure, they can withdraw some funds, etc. But they don't have any real military power to actually force you to do it. So you can say, nah, we don't want to do it. It's not good for our people. We put our people first. That's an excellent start. And now I know some Hungarians don't really like Viktor Orban, but you know, I will say you're a bit spoiled. At least, yeah, he might not be perfect. I'm sure he is perhaps a bit corrupt. Who knows? Who cares? At least he's not trying to replace his own population as we have in Sweden or, or Germany, etc. So, you know what, you have a good leader, even though you might find fault with him. Same thing with Poland, I understand your government isn't 100% perfect in every regard, but again, you don't have a regime that is actively trying to replace you in your own homes. So, yeah, be a bit humble in, in that regard. And for all Eastern European guys, just if you want to talk about politics, Ask everyone you talk to to just look at Sweden, for example, going from the best country in the world to not so great anymore, especially in terms of, you know, if you have women you care about. If you're for women, you are against mass immigration from the third world. Simple as that. If someone is for mass migration from the third world, they are anti-female, they're anti-women, they probably don't even like women. So keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, stay strong, heads up. We don't chin up, we don't need to be all defeatist. This thing has just started. Um, Europe is not lost. Eastern Europe is definitely not lost and uh, you know we have a long way to go but but nothing is over until it's over. So thank you for watching XXO. Boom.